one of the other you know big macro trends is um, you know like I was saying like towards the democratization of, of cultural production and I think if you look back you know over the course of the past 2,000 years or thousand years or whatever you know there was very much about like the singular artist who made one art object which could be enjoyed by you know one person or one group of people at a time Michelangelo making a statue of David for some rich patron and then you know you shift in towards mechanical you know reproduction so that you could make you know artifacts which could be you know distributed to you know masses of people and um, you know but it took big you know media companies to like manufacture and, you know you had it, there were you had to have big media companies manufacture and distribute these things uh, and then we reached the digital age where anyone can produce and consume and recombine and, and you know the very metaphors of, of production and distribution almost become meaningless because everything is 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 so you know it's become sort of difficult to delineate like the point of creation and the point of of, of recombination and, and and all that so i think those are like the two big macro trends um at least that i kind of see um and i'm sure there's a like, bunch of others i mean you know obviously like the the the, the, the trend towards rationalization and, and and you know science and the you know the end of superstition things like that is you know really really huge and like you know max Weber has really you know did a great job chronicling that Uh, I think so. I mean, I think uh, to be honest, it's a trend that has been going on for a, you know, I mean, it's going on for a long time, and I think you know the internet might be accelerating that trend. But I also think that like the interesting part is is that um, we're starting to blur the lines a little bit between you know human and machine intelligence and artificial intelligence, and I think that's actually going to be that might be one of the biggest questions, the biggest you know, like philosophical issues of the 21st century is like where does you know, human intelligence end. Like, where do we, where do we draw that line? We're going to reach this point where, like, you know, machine intelligence, you know, artificial intelligence is so powerful, is so good at, like, you know, seeming human that we're going to have a tough time, you know, especially when we start to augment our own intelligences as, as we've already started, that we're going to have a tough time sort of drawing that line of, of where does, you know, human intelligence end and, and machine intelligence begin? And, and, you know, how should we treat a machine intelligence? They're going to be, machine intelligences are going to be um, you know, multiple in the way that human intelligence is singular, right? Like, you know, we have one personality and we exist in one place at a time, even if we're online and things like that. It's like, it's going to be so difficult. The metaphor, we're not going to even have metaphors to like comprehend, you know, what a machine intelligence is really like, just in the same way that like, we don't have good metaphors for understanding, like even what like light really is, right? You know, it's both a particle and a wave. And we, it's something that we can't even like grasp with our, like, you know, with our brains. And I think this is going to be a huge issue. And you know, that, in a sense, it might be kind of the final frontier of this, like, project of universalization of, you know, what, where do we fit them in? And, and it's not going to be like on, you know, Star Trek The Next Generation where you have, you know, Data the android, you know, trying to, like, get the Federation to, to you know, grant him the rights of a sentient being. Um, it's going to be this multiplicity of machine intelligence that can exist everywhere and nowhere and that, like, you can't even really, the, there won't be that sort of discreteness that there are to, to there is to human intelligence, and I think that's going to make things really, really complicated. And I don't know whether it's an issue that we're going to face. You know, I mean, I, I hope I live long enough to face it, but I mean, it's not something. I mean, I don't know when. I mean, this could be like 20, 30 years from now. This could be 50 years from now. Um, but it's something that we're going to face sooner or later. And especially, I mean, as we start to use you know biology, biological means to like you know um, adapt ourselves to our, you know change ourselves, change our bodies, and and you know, change our genome and things like that, like, it, it's going to start to get really, really messy and really blurry. And I think these are really the fundamental issues uh, 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 of the 21st century. It, you know, apart from, you know, ter obviously terrorism and stuff like that is going to be huge. But I mean, you know, in terms of like philosoph philosophically speaking, and I think this is actually what's interesting about like, if you take, you know, the sort of the rise of Islamic fundamentals and sort of like this dialectical reaction or whatever to um, modernism, which is, you know, that the real ultimate solution to, to the problem of, of, of you know Islamic fundamentalist you know terrorism is to you know mod it's to basically bring those you know bring those societies you know into the into modernity into post modernity you know. <laughs>